such a betrayal of human mankind. How could you do that to anyone? Why would you take their money? She thought they were friends, but tonight this Austin grandmother is out $400,000. That's most of her life savings, and she's not alone. She's one of more than 100 Central Texans who are out more than $16 million. It's money they invested with someone they knew and trusted. KXAN investigative reporter Nancy Wilson joins us with the details of what lawyers looking into this case are calling a Ponzi scheme. They are, Robert and Leslie. Let me explain to you. It's several complex real estate deals, and we'll get to those in just a minute. But what we're really talking about is millions of dollars handed over to Robert and Claudia Langeth by friends, family, and business associates, all in hopes of building a solid retirement nest egg. But the investors we talked to say while their life savings were going down the drain, the people they trusted were living large. A brief moment of quiet reflection. Then real life takes over. So I've already been up and had breakfast since I've been up since 5 o'clock with my husband, getting him off to work. Peggy Sharp's life is not simple. How's your day going, son? Fine. Okay, you got to go to work today. So I have a 29-year-old that uh, is special needs, and he lives at home. Is that too hot? That's why Peggy and her husband have carefully planned for the future. If we ever got raises, that money didn't go into our pocket. It went into our savings that we gave to Robert. Saving not only for their future, but Kurt's as well. This was a big deal for us because we trusted them to help us make sure that Kurt had a secure future, that he had a place to live and the money he needed to survive on after we're gone. They trusted Robert and Claudia Langeth, friends they met through a networking group. The Langeths ran Capital Finance. It matches investors with borrowers to make short-term real estate loans. Their brochure promised their loans were secured by deed of trust and borrowers were carefully screened. None had ever missed an interest payment. It sounded promising, so the Sharps gave it a try. Uh, we decided to um, do $20,000 in cash because he paid cash check once a month, and uh, that was for a year. Uh, at the end of the year, he gave us back our $20,000. We were happy with that. Happy Investors recommended the program to others. Rick Precup's 79-year-old mother invested $100,000. She was receiving interest payments for a period of not quite two years, which gave us, led, led us to believe nothing's going wrong, everything's okay, then all of a sudden the interest payments stopped. Interest payments connected to this land. In 2005, the Langus bought the property, 10 acres in Spicewood. The couple needed money to subdivide the land, so they asked investors to fund a $170,000 loan arranged through the Langus company. Four people chipped in to fully fund the loan, but the Langus kept bringing people into the deal. By July 2008, 14 people had invested a total of $910,000 on what was really a $170,000 loan. The investors never got their money back. So what happened to it? Well, it was all deposited into one bank account controlled by the Langets, the same account they used to pay earlier investors, pay credit cards, and to build their personal home. We helped them move into their house. Tina Holmes says Claudia Langwitz was one of her closest friends. I'll never forget this. They brought over their plans, and we were sitting down having a drink, and she rolled them out, and she goes, and here's the kitty hotel, and here's the library and here's the elevator and it was like over 10,000 square feet and we were like shocked you know that they would need that much space space for seven living areas four bedrooms nine bathrooms in an exclusive West Austin neighborhood gold-plated door handles custom marble flooring and an imported Baccarat chandelier that friends say Langeth claimed cost $50,000 Everything was just over the top opulent. I mean, they always had, you know, exquisite taste, expensive taste. Uh, you know, they drank Tattinger champagne and they ate crab legs every Sunday and lobster and, you know, everything was, you know, just the, the best. But it didn't last long. The Langets filed bankruptcy and moved to South Carolina. That's when investors learned for the first time that many of the properties they'd invested in were either sold or were being foreclosed on by banks who had also loaned the Langets money. When asked under oath by attorneys why he didn't file the legal paperwork necessary to protect their investment, this is what Robert Langeth said. I invoke my Fifth Amendment right not to be a witness against myself. I decline to respond to that question. 
He declined eight more times when asked about this deal. I'll take the fifth again. I'll take the fifth. I've been advised to take the fifth again. Langeth may not be talking, but his investors are. Peggy Sharp lost $400,000. Why would you look so in the eye and tell you, I'm going to help you make your financial go so your son will always have a place to live? Tina Holmes' friendship and trust in the Langeths has vanished, along with her $314,000. How could you dare do this to people that you, that you, people that you thought that loved you, that trusted you, were your friends? How could you dare do that? How could you dare live with yourself? Robert Langa sent us this written response for tonight's story. I am deeply sorry for the harm I've caused to those who put their trust in me. I regret the choices I made that caused others' funds and financial security to be lost. Now, Langa went on to say he never intended for his business to devolve in this way, and he was just trying to create cash flow. You can read his entire statement by clicking on the Investigations tab on KXCN.com. We've also posted much more information on the company and this investigation as well. We'll let you know what happens.